Hey, Don Copeland here with the DTG G4, and we're going to talk a little bit today about the difference between printing on light shirts, printing on dark shirts, and costs, timing, everything, to kind of give you an idea about the best way to uh, address this with your customers and know, knowing when to sell dark, when to sell light, and how to address it so that it doesn't look like you're really trying to jack things up by going in a certain direction price-wise. So what we've done today is we've taken the exact same file, all right, and we're printing it out on a white shirt and a black shirt, all right? Exact same graphic as you can see. You don't see the black outline on this, all right? You don't see the white fill <laughs> on this one in the cold SE. So we chose one that was intentionally a file that we could duplicate exactly across. I mean, it is literally the same file. I dropped it just into the same, to the different cues for the white shirt and the dark shirt. We'll, uh, we'll start off just uh, before we start to print is to give you a breakdown of what they cost. About 28 cents to print this and a dollar sixty-two to print this. Now, the process we do pr prior and post to these is exactly the same. We pre-treat them, we dry the pre-treat, basically the same amount of pre-treat goes on the shirt, and it's gonna take the same amount of time on the heat press. So those are gonna be the same, and coming out of the machine, they're both gonna take 45 seconds to cure as well. So that part stays the same. It's one of the things that changed in DTG from the early days. All right, in the early days, it, we, we may have had completely different amounts of pre-treat or different cost pre-treats that went on the shirts or no pre-treat at all in some of the early inks. And we certainly had different cure times. Some of the cure times on a shirt like this used to be three minutes to cure this. And a shirt like this would have been about a minute and a half. Now they're just flat 45 seconds. So that just speeds things up as well. It reduces down the need for as many pieces of equipment. A lot of folks almost always have to have two heat presses to go with the, the machines themselves. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's get started. Let's print a shirt or two and then we'll uh, give you some more information on what we're trying to do here. I'm away from the DTG for, side for a while, playing with my UV printers, and uh, I'm excited to get back to this because there's so many things that are cool about this machine. It has a memory. So I've actually already printed the jobs over here to the control panel. I'm gonna be able to pull up those jobs. In fact, we'll go ahead right now. We're gonna pull, I've got the white shirt in my hand. Had to look at the shirt, right? I'm gonna go to the one that I did for the white shirt. As you can see, the background shows that it's white. I wanna select that job, select it, it's going to show up on the control panel right here, so we can see what we're getting ready to print. Even tells you the name of the job and all right there. We'll go ahead and load up a shirt and print. This is another awesome part about using the, uh, the G4. You don't have to worry about a tuck lock platen, or some of the early platens actually had a ring that went around it. With this, I can literally just swoop this on. We're using this. This is a patented vacuum patent. Comes out of a Belcat Technologies a division of Coldesi that allows us very quickly and easily place it. it. It holds down, it draws down. Initially, it draws down a lot to get the shirt configured to it. Once it is drawn the shirt down, you hear it, it dropped down. Now it's just in a maintain mode, it's not drawing it. One of the things it does too is it helps to draw the ink into the shirt better so you get a better set and, when you, and better washability out of long term. All I gotta do now, once I've loaded the shirt on, literally, is press the load button. When it goes in, it's gonna check the height. Literally right now, check the height, lowers it down. I don't have to worry about setting that like I would. I could be doing something else right now because the machine is going to take care of it and it's going to start printing. Now this shirt, as we said, it costs 28 cents for ink for this parrot. And it's going to take just under a minute to print. The timing that I got on my, the shirt that I showed you earlier was a 57 seconds to print this shirt. So you can see the 57 second print time if I'm doing light colored shirts. I do have time to get, get one heat pressed and turned. I am gonna run into some challenges though if I'm trying to do some, some pre-treating and uh, also curing at the same time. So I probably would need a second heat press and, and this kind of turn because literally I could, at 57 seconds a piece, even if you take time for me to cycle in and out of here, I ought to be able to easily on this produce, again, 40 or 45 shirts an hour if I have enough heat presses to keep up with me. Let's go ahead and throw this one over on the heat press. Going to anger my uh, my camera lady because she always liked the shirt facing towards her. But I'm not going to do that with a big white shirt. <laughs> you can always climb back there, Hannah, and get behind it. <laughs> All right, get that going. As you'll see right here, comes up 45 seconds, 350 degrees, 350, 351, whatever it takes. All right, so now the second, we'll go ahead and load up the black shirt. All right, this has already been pre-treated as well. Throw that down onto there. Get it evened up.
Pretty good about that. All right, now I'm gonna go over here again, go to recent jobs. Check the parrot for test. That's a, if you see, it's got a black background, so I know it's one I did for a black shirt. Select it. Shows up over here. Mash the magic button. Here it goes again. You see it's gonna set the height, lowers it down to the right height, and it's ready to go. Now this shirt costs $1.62 for ink. So you're looking at about seven and seven and a half times, about seven times the cost of the uh, cost, no, no, I guess it's like six times the cost of the white parrot. Two minutes and 49 seconds versus 57 seconds. Roughly triple the amount of time to print the black shirt. So why am I saying that? We're talking about doing 40 to 45 shirts an hour in white. Now all of a sudden with one printer, we're effectively only going to do 15, maybe 18 shirts an hour at the most. It means our productivity is one third of what it is and our cost is, on this shirt alone, our cost is about $1.35 higher. So how do we get around this? What do we do about this? Number one, when you're quoting your customers, what you want to do you want to, is quote them on black shirts initially all right that way that the pricing when you go to a white shirt or a light colored shirt is going to be much lower all right so if i quoted a customer on this shirt at say ten dollars a piece and then they go wow that's more than i wanted you could literally drop back to like 750 or eight dollars and give them a white shirt or a light colored shirt right and they feel like they're getting the deal that they that they wanted, you're actually gonna be making more money because you're gonna produce more than twice as many shirts an hour. Your cost has gone down a dollar and a quarter in the physical materials themselves and the inks. Generally, the shirts are a little bit cheaper as well. So it's all about how you price it. And you can also slide in there and take the, the white shirt settings and we can print on ash colored shirts, natural shirts, pastel colored shirts that don't require white ink and be able to print the same thing, get a very similar looking output, right? We could even use a little white highlight in there to fill in the lettering in white. And again, you're still gonna have your higher productivity at your lower cost. All right, there it is. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the heat press again. 45 seconds, 350 degrees. All right, I wanna just go through all the steps of all the, the equipment and the, the goodies that we use to make this, all right? So basically when we started the whole, whole thing, we started out, with the, the PTM, our pretreatment machine. The pre PTM has settings for two different types of pretreats. We have one, one setting you turn to one side and it's for light shirts, one side you go for dark shirts. Whether you're using the, one of our M2s or one of our other machines, or if you're using the G4, we have different light and dark pretreatments, all right? Uh, once we had pretreated it in here, we put it onto the heat press. This is a George Knight DK20A, just 16 by 20 automatic pop-up heat press, as you'll see here in a few seconds, it's gonna pop up. All right, we actually have it on one of the, 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 the stands for the DK20S, which is really convenient, right? Because you bolt it down to this, this stand. They're not, they're not cheap, but they're not a lot of money, and they're a lot better than just having it on a table. Because if you notice, it popped a little bit there, but because it's bolted to this relatively heavy stand, it didn't pop off and it's not walking all over the place. And conveniently, it's a little bit lower than most tables would be. So it's a little bit easier for you to work with ergonomically. It's better on your body, I think, to do. So we've pre-treated, set it in the, the pre-treated the, uh, pre shirt into the heat press, pressed it, then we load it into the DTG G4, all right, and let it do its printing. And then we kind of go back over to the heat press to cure it. We used, again, let me make sure we got everything here. We're using the, the Kodak ink set with the Kodak light and dark shirt colored uh, pre-treatments, these are all available on Coleman and Company. The cartridges in here, the machine has six cartridges, two white cartridges, one each of the, the four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, all right? And that's really kind of the whole process. We're using the, the DTG C7 RIP software to, to print with. It has the cues already configured for your light shirts, dark shirts, colored shirts, and white ink only. So that would be the whole process, the whole system, kind of getting your heads wrapped around the difference between light shirts and dark shirts and how you price things and how to get your mindset with your customers right. And, and, and there's ways to do it. I didn't have any uh, 
ash or natural colored shirts here, but I, you can very easily take an ash or a natural colored shirt, or like I said, a pastel shirt, a light blue, a light pink, a light yellow, and print those colors on them. If you remember, if you've seen some of my other videos, I had one where I did some, uh, some rally towels. And one of the rally towels had blue and black on it, and it was a light blue colored rally towel. I could very easily have printed that on a light yellow towel and not had much of a shift. If I wanted to make sure I overcame, I could just juice up my blue with a little bit darker blue to overcome the yellow. So just some great ways that you can make money, be effective with your equipment, offer your customers different things. We'll be showing you some other stuff in the future. I'm Don Copeland.